Imagine you could buy all the gems you've ever wanted. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? But even fabulous riches have their downside. More money, more problems. Like trying to choose which rare jewels to wear out each night, friends always wanting to borrow your stuff, and of course, you have to find somewhere to keep it. No one wants to lose a priceless emerald in their couch cushions. From Edward III's Jewel Tower to the Vatican's underground archives, legendary treasures often require some equally legendary accommodations. By the way, you can accommodate us by clicking on that bell to get notified about all of our new videos. Think of us as your own personal treasure trove of cool facts about gems and jewelry. Today's tale begins with Augustus the Strong, who ruled Saxony and Poland in the late 17th and early 18th centuries. As his moniker might suggest, Mr. The Strong was one of those larger than life figures figures from history where fact tends to get mixed up with legend. It's been said that he used to break iron horseshoes with his bare hands. He once built the world's largest wine barrel to win a bet, and he was rumored to have fathered more than 300 children. But what he really liked was gold. And well, diamonds, silver, rubies, pretty much anything shiny. And he had the means to acquire a lot of it. And we're not just talking money. As king, he was able to do stuff like, say, imprison an alchemist for several years to make him find a way to turn base metals into gold. Surprise, there isn't one. But he did hit upon the secret for making porcelain, so it kind of worked out. So there's no hard feelings? No, no, no hard feelings. Augustus soon needed a whole new space to store all of his fabulous bling. And if you guessed that he was about to erect the world's first complex of space-saving storage units, well, then you've greatly misjudged the character of Augustus the Strong. Instead, Augustus set about expanding the royal repository into eight magnificent Baroque rooms, with names like the Gem Room, the Ivory Room, and the Hall of Treasures. The rooms were stuffed with all kinds of ornate jewels, as well as precious curiosities like gilded ostrich eggs, nautilus shells, shark teeth, and a cherry pit carved with over a hundred human faces. Called the Green Vault after the malachite-tinted paint of its first rooms, it soon became a celebrated chamber of wonders. But it's what Augustus did next that ensured we'd still be talking about him today. Rather than keeping his riches hidden away and resisting the perfectly natural urge to install a series of deadly booby traps, Augustus instead decided to throw caution to the wind and open his green vault to the public, making it one of the first museums of its kind. Suddenly, regular folks like you and me could get a close-up look at all the swag that comes with being born into a life of royalty. We could look at the huge array of goblets and chalices fashioned from gold, agate, and serpentine, to name a few, and conclude that Augustus and his ancestors liked a stiff drink now and then. But you'll get an even better picture of those late night royal ragers when you see something as unique as the automation of St. George and the Dragon. Here, the horse's head can be removed, and there's a hidden compartment to be filled with your drink of choice. A wind-up mechanism sends it whirling around the table until it stops in front of a lucky guest, who is then obliged to down the drink. Another variation features the goddess Diana on a centaur. The centaur shoots his silver arrow at the chosen guest. That's right, Saxony's royals play drinking games with the 17th century's most expensive wind-up toys. After a night of such revelry, one might gravitate towards something like the 145 piece golden coffee service. One of the earliest works of Augustus's extraordinary court jeweler, Johann Dinglinger, the set is a Baroque masterpiece of precious metals, carved ivory, and over 5,600 diamonds. But watch out, the cups are only painted to look like porcelain. They're actually pure gold, which can transmit the heat from something like steaming coffee efficiently enough to scald you. Mother of God! Oh! With detailed jewel-encrusted characters almost everywhere you look, at times the green vault feels like some kind of billion-dollar dollhouse. But instead of totally hair Barbies or Jedi Knights, what figure does a king with ridiculous wealth like to play with? Another king with even more insane wealth. At least that's what you might guess from the fantastic diorama depicting Grand Mughal Aurangzeb's birthday. Now, Zeb was emperor of India in Augustus's time, and the splendor of his court was legendary. Though neither Augustus nor Dinglinga had ever been to India, the court was thoroughly reimagined and pure gold glazed with enamel. And bonus, each figure is movable should you want to stage a tea party or an epic battle. Dad, you saved the castle! Some assembly required. 
Decorated with 5,223 diamonds, 189 rubies, 175 emeralds, 53 pearls, and maybe a partridge in a pear tree, it took eight years to complete and cost Augustus more than he paid for the construction of his Muritzburg castle. Yeah, you heard that right. He paid more for this miniature than he did for an actual castle. The green vault was packed with so many fascinating one-of-a-kind pieces, I could literally talk about them all day. We haven't even mentioned the ivory skeletons, the 548 karat sapphire, or the royal Saxon egg, with its secret compartments that likely inspired Peter Carl Fabergé. But we do have a video about Fabergé's famous eggs right here. After Augustus's reign, the collection continued to grow. In fact, his son acquired what may be the most valuable piece of all. I'm talking about the Dresden Green, a 41 karat naturally colored green diamond, the largest specimen of its kind with exceptional clarity. The Dresden Green is often cited alongside the likes of the Hope Diamond as one of the most famous diamonds in the world. It's thought to get its green color from gamma rays, just like the Hulk. The following year showed the downside to keeping all your Saxon eggs in one basket, making it an irresistible target. The jewels of the green vault went into hiding inside the far more austere walls of the Königstein Fortress as wars threatened the city. Finally, in World War II, the vaults were heavily damaged by bombings, while the aptly named Soviet Trophy Brigade grabbed the treasure, sending it back to Mother Russia. After years of negotiation, the collection was ultimately returned to Dresden, and in the early 2000s, the Green Vault was reconstructed and opened to the public once more. So, all's well that ends well, right? <laughs> well... Happy endings are just stories that haven't finished yet. In the early morning hours of November 25th, 2019, the Green Vault was the scene of one of the biggest heists of all time. Playing out like something planned by Hans Gruber, a group of thieves first set fire to a junction box, causing an electrical outage which disabled the museum's alarms. After breaking through an iron gate, the thieves, who were described by witnesses as noticeably small, climbed through a ground floor window. Once inside, they smashed a display case and took several pieces of jewelry garniture set with over a thousand precious gemstones, including a 49 karat diamond known as the Dresden White. So it was the little men in the Hall of Treasure with the axe. A reward of 500,000 euros has been offered for info leading to the thieves' capture or the recovery of the stolen jewels. Let's hope for the best and be glad that they only got a small portion of the many wonders the Green Vault has to offer. If you had a priceless collection, where would you put it? Would you let anyone come take a look at it? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell while you're down there. Check out the links for more information. Thanks for watching.